Hi there, Dead Eye Dale Boy here, back with another video. And before we go into this video, I just want to say one thing that is really cool about growing a YouTube channel is the amount of lovely messages you get from people when you enter into a lobby. Because people have obviously watched the videos, they know who we are, and they like to say hello. It's really nice. So if you ever see me in a lobby, then yeah, say hello. Add me on PSN, all that good stuff. But here we are, Dragon Trail Gardens, Group 3, and now this is Daily Race B, and it's really one of those daily races that I think a lot of people just didn't give a lot of respect to this week for whatever reason. Dragon Trail Gardens doesn't have the death chicane like Seaside does, so I think it's just generally considered just not to be that interesting a track. But what is interesting is this video, and you'll see why now. You haven't subscribed to the channel that little reminder there hopefully will prompt you to do that so yeah it would really help me out if you hit that subscribe button so here we come round the fast flowing triple left hander you can see there the leader nick bear just got it a bit wrong and went wide we absolutely seized upon the opportunity to go right up the inside there and take the unexpected lead in lap one now those eagle eyed amongst you may notice this is not the Dead Eye Del Boy YT account that we usually do our videos on. This is the Dead Last Del Boy account. Now there is a reason for that. This is an alt account that I want to try and get to A+, because having only one account at A+, is basically fraught with danger when you're trying to create some content for YouTube, because you do some races, you end up in some situations that you might not ne necessarily want to put yourself in and that has a negative impact on the driver rating and that can then cost you when you're trying to get into obviously GT World Series events, all that kind of thing so it's always good to have an alt account just in the back burner and this is mine now it's currently high A rated and we are on the precipice, on the verge getting to A+. Plus. So these races you're about to see, this one and the next one, are absolutely critical to trying to get this account up to A+. Plus. We've made a very good start in this race because we've just overtaken an A+, plus driver to go into P1 and we've gapped them to a one second margin. So we've completed lap one safely and like I said, I was just hoping to get a good result in this race, finish ahead of as many A+, plus drivers as I could and basically improve my driver rating and it's basically went really according to plan so far as we're safely in P1 just now although gaps coming down slightly but that's to be expected when you're leading a race you've got the added pressure you've got nothing to follow you've got to do all the running and make all the headway the car behind can see what you're doing can react to what you've done make adjustments on the fly all that kind of stuff whereas we just have to try and hit our marks, hit our apexes, hit our lines and basically not crash that's, that's what my normal mantra is when I'm leading a race is basically stay in front for as long as possible without killing yourself so, so far so good we finished lap 2 and as I've said at the beginning of this it's a track which I think is seriously underrated seriously undervalued just doesn't get the respect that it deserves. So we come across to say a 132, but look at the lap behind us, it's a 131.5, so we know that Nick is a quick driver and he's not going to go down without a fight, as you can see the gap's now down just over half a second, so the pressure is on us here. But what I found with this combination is, for some reason, it just really suits me. It suits my driving style, it suits just how I like tracks to flow, it's just everything about it. I've got really clear visions on where I need to hit the brakes and where I can accelerate and how I can accelerate and just everything about it is, yeah, it suits me. I don't know why. And like I said, it gets, yeah, a lot of, I wouldn't say disrespect, but it's really not classed as one of the best tracks on GT. Basically because it's, well, it's Dragon Trail and it's easy to knock Dragon Trail because it's this, as I said, doesn't have the chicane of death, obviously, it doesn't have that fear. 
but this is just a fast flowing really good racetrack in my opinion this sector here that's that's the danger section you've got two curbs there which can unsettle the car quite a bit and you've got this fast flowing right hander which you've got to hit just right otherwise you can end up drifting out onto the big curb on the left and that can cause you major major problems but we're not having major problems in this race thus far as we go across look at that for a lap time a 131.4 so we've laid down a marker now to nick behind us we've told them anything you can do we can do better but can we hang on because there's one thing doing a couple of quick laps but can you do them consistently now we do a 131.7 and then we do a 131.6 but you can see the gap as we head into the last lap Nick is on it he is really closing it in as you can see from the radar he's basically just two or three tenths in it now as we head into the fast flowing left hander now the last lap now becomes nothing to do with pace, it just becomes a defence issue. Now, we're going to try and defend as best we can this last lap because we're not really bothered about the, the pace. We've got the fastest lap in the bag at the moment. We know we can do, we can go quick, but you can see he's basically glued to my back bumper now, so I know that I'm not going to open up too much of a gap even if I go as quick as I can, so I really just need to make sure can see how close in the radar there and really need, really need to make sure I hit my lines here so we're going to go slightly slower slightly more defensive around the hairpin and try and get this power smoothly out now he's going to have a real good chance to get a run of his doubt run on his doubt into the little chicane and this means we're going to have to go very narrow very defensive and that's a little bit off putting because we've not really hit that line going through here so we're going to have to slow the car right down go over that curve so that he can't make a run up the inside of us but he's right on us now he gets a better run out of that corner meaning we need to go narrow and as we go narrow we're going to have to just adjust when we accelerate out here but we just got on the power a little bit too quick and we head out over the curb and the back end just goes and oh my goodness that is the worst finish to a race you can imagine we actually pit lane ourselves and as we're going down the pit lane we lose position after position and we get the absolute horror of a three second penalty for the incorrect pit lane entry and you can see there we just tumbled down the rankings and we finished you know we let about three A plus drivers back ahead of us lost there was quite a bit of driver waiting gain there but you can see there in the replay Nick actually went off worse than I did somehow avoided the barrier we headed off into the pit lane and Nick Crossy took the win. Let's look at it from Nick's car. Just look how close he was to disaster. He manages to stay on the grass and just avoid the barrier. We didn't even go off as much as he did. And we got the absolute worst end of the deal there as we headed off into the pits. It's really quite funny when you look back on it now, though. I have to admit. So, yep, you can stop laughing now, hopefully. As we begin our second race and hopefully the plight or the the goal of A plus will be, well, hopefully achieved. If we can just get a decent finish here, we absolutely bottled that last one. So, again, we've got a really quick driver behind us, the Norwegian. He set a really quick qualifying time as well, and he's an A plus driver. A couple of other A plus drivers lurking in the ranks behind as well. So we really need to, yeah, we just need to try and, as I said, get a, get a good strong finish. As you can see from the last race doing 131s down into 131.4 I mean we've got some decent pace we're not obviously alien quick round here but we can we can certainly hold our own that's for sure and I, I can't often say that about myself in group 3 cars I can be quick in qualifying and often my race pace lets me down but in this combination the Porsche round gardens I actually felt that like my race pace was legit as good as my qualifying pace and that really is a big step for me so hopefully I can use this week and push on and, and yeah I know it's group 3 next week in daily race C so hopefully we can carry on this form and get some good results so lap 1 like I said we're doing not bad we're holding our own we've got a bit of confidence not really opened up much of a gap but we do there you see briefly he's up to 7 tenths but it's coming back down now and we're going to try and nail this right-hander, try and open up as much of a gap as possible as we get right onto the kerb, powering out, perfectly judged. 
come across the line. Anything less than a 137 is quite a quick first lap. Let's see what we can do. There we go, 136.8, so that's decent. Skipping forward to the end of lap two, things start to unravel slightly for us as we get out. Not the best run out there, and you can see from the radar that the Norwegian is now right on as he's pinning us over to the right-hand side, making us go narrow. Going to just try and stay as narrow as we can whilst remaining defensive so we don't run wide. Holding the inside line on the apexes and we get the run out, but he's right on me. He's right stuck to my bumper in the jag, which is going to have more. Which is basically brute force down this straight, and he's got the run up the inside, and we're going to have to give him it. Otherwise, it could have ended in disaster for us. So we give him, well, we don't give him the position. He earned it nicely with a really good move, really good strong run and overtake. But what I would say now is that in normal circumstances, I would probably just lay down now, try and protect the P2, except that the guy has overtaken me because he's a faster driver, and that's where the story would end. That's where it would normally end. This week, there was just something about this combination that gave me the confidence to, to not give in, basically, and not go defensive and basically go on the attack, and that's not something I can say I do very often. If you've watched my videos in the past, you'll see very much I'm a bottle merchant. Um, I've had some good races and some good finishes, but I've had some absolute horror heartbreaks over the, over the course of this YouTubing lap that we've got ourselves involved in so hopefully this time will be different and there was like I said something just in the air of this week and we've taken this dead last Del Boy account from the low ranks of B we're now on the verge of A plus and you can see here we skip forward onto lap 4 we're still right on the Norwegian we're still putting him under a lot of pressure and that as I said was something that I normally wouldn't find myself capable of, we've gapped the car behind in P3 and we're going to start to have a little bit of a fight as we come down to the chicane, we're kind of forced him into a little mistake there as he gets a little bit out of shape, usually it's me that's making the mistakes but not this time, not this week, oh no, and he gets away a little bit there but watch the slingshot we managed to achieve out of this corner here, so we got on the power absolutely perfectly and look how much we start to gain on him and now we've got a run, he may have more horsepower than the Porsche, but we've got the slipstream and we've got the run, will we go for the move, we're going to go up the inside, now this is going to be tight, as we hit the brakes, we need to give him space on the outside, we need to give him it, we do give him it, we've held the inside line, but as we know, he's got a lot more power under that hood than I do, and we're going to come over slightly to the left to defend the line, is he going to make the move up the inside, he's not by the looks of it, and we've managed to secure the position, so a P1 now, and we've got just over, just under, sorry, two laps to go and we're going to have the Jag firmly on our tail. Now, I would have much preferred that to have happened, this to have happened in the last lap, but it didn't. So we've got quite a bit of time now that we need to hold on and I don't know if it's going to be possible because, as I've said, we are the ultimate bottle merchants. We've got A-plus driver rating on the line here and we have... Uh, very quick player behind us, but he's made a mistake there. You can see that. We were actually very strong coming out of that hairpin. That was a feature of this week. I found myself, I was really able to nail that nicely. And I'd always pick up a little bit of time. This was probably the weakest part of the track for me, but we risk it and we go over the sausage here, which gives us a much better run out there. And you can see, we managed to sort of maintain that gap at around about 7 tenths, although it is coming down now. And we're always going to have more power coming up the straight. So just keep an eye on that delta as we cross the line to head into the last lap, how big a gap are we going to have to play with in terms of our defence, so we're not doing particularly quick lap times in this race, it was all about the racing, it was all about defending, as you can see, coming round the chicane for the last time, we haven't killed ourselves, but look at that delta, it's coming down quick, four tenths now, is it going to drop into the three tenths, oh, it's going to be tight, but we managed to get a good enough run out of the final corner, Quick look back, we know we're safe, we've secured the position, we're going to take the win. Finally, we managed to put it all together. Not a particularly quick finishing time for the course of this week, but it got the job done, and that's the main thing. We actually managed to lose P1 and then get it back, something we don't often do. You can see here in the replay, 
this was the move that finished it all off for us. A really, really nice run. So respect to the Norwegian. This is what you love about Gran Turismo 7. Look at the side-by-side -side racing here. Total respect given by both players. No lunges, no desperation, just good racing, accepting sometimes somebody is slightly faster and you just have to give them that room and respect so once again though thank you all for tuning in watching the videos if you like the videos then hit that like button subscribe to the channel that would be a massive deal if you could do that as we try and grow as best we can so yep thanks very much for watching and Enjoy the rest of your Sunday or whenever you're watching this and I'll see you all on the track next week hopefully. Goodbye.